गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून सर ओके थैंक यू सो टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट एंटोमोलॉजी सो इन दैट वी विल डिस्कस समथिंग अबाउट एनाफलिस मस्किटो एंड कुलेक्स मस्किटो सो यू नो इट वाज इट माइट बी कवर्ड इन द एनवायरमेंट चैप्टर सो दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रैक्टिकल ट्रेनिंग इन द कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन इन योर फाइनल एग्जामिनेशन so you should finally you should be able to identify the spotter that is a slide of a mosquito or other arthropods which we will keep during our practical examinations right so it will be carrying for our final mbbs part 1 practical internal assessment examination marks so final examination also it will be having You, you will be having the spotters so please be carefully viewing the slides and after you come to you arrive to the medical college you can view through the microscope so today we will discuss about anopheles and culex right okay so before this, this topic was already finished in entomology in environment chapter so we will go a brief pretest quick pretest so where you are up to you can check your mobile or any gadget electronic device or books and you can answer after a 5 to 10 second pause after a completion of question right okay starting with the first question so mosquitoes that breed in dirty water collection are a anopheles b culex c edis b mansonia you can unmute yourself and you can answer the question yes you can guess no need to answer the correct one you can learn through mistakes so you can guess you can uh, opt any answer of the following options culex so some are speaking about culex so if you know the fresh water then you can exclude some of the options given in the question right okay we will see during the lecture second question the anopheles species most commonly found in coastal regions is a anopheles philippinensis b anopheles stephensi c anopheles fluviatilis d anopheles minimans anopheles stephensi anopheles stephensi some are opting for anopheles stephensi okay any other options you want to pick again this species vary from the hilly regions plains or coastal regions so again this is a broad classification we will see during the lecture okay third question normal life span of mosquito is how many days a 2 to 3 days b 5 to 7 days C eight to thirteen days. D three to four months. Five to five to seven days. Some are opting for five to seven. Some are opting for eight to thirty-four. okay we will see what is the normal life span of mosquito so it is also very important so that we can plan the control measures for this mosquitoes okay fourth question mosquitoes whose larva lie horizontally on water and thus rest parallel to the surface of water which type of mosquito larva so a edis b anopheles c culex d mansonides anopheles sir excellent so one or opting for anopheles any other options you want to pick okay we'll see during the lecture 
so fifth question best approach to the control of arthropods is a environmental control b chemical control c biological control d genetic control c biological control any other options some are opting for biological control any other environmental control so some are opting for environmental, environmental control. control yes many are opting for environmental control okay we will see which is the best method for controlling this arthropods so sixth one all of the following methods are anti larval methods except a intermittent irrigation b paris green c gambusafenis d pyrethrum pyrethrum so some are opting for pyrethrum some are opting for paris green we will see which is the anti larval measures so we can exclude the option so we will get the correct answer for this question so we'll move into the seventh question mosquito net hole diameter is how much 0.02 inch 0.0475 inch 0.5 inch 0.9 inch 0.475 inch Zero point zero four seven five inch. Okay, we got a responses a lot of from the option B that is zero point zero four seven five inch. We will see which is the correct answer. Okay, Paris green is used to eliminate larva of which species of mosquito? A. Anopheles. B culex C edis D mansonidis Anopheles Yes some are opting for anopheles mosquito okay we will see during the lecture So identify this slide A anopheles larva B culex larva C anopheles pupa D culex pupa So first you can confirm whether it is larva or pupa then you can go with the choices of which it is anopheles or culex anopheles larva okay some are anopheles larva yes many are opting for anopheles larva any other and you are seeing a siphon tube in this picture okay we'll see during the lecture so okay last question 10th one most hazardous pesticide color coding is you can identify the color and you can pick the correct answer you can guess red color red color okay many are opting for red color okay we will see which is the 
correct color coding for the most hazardous. I am asking for most hazardous. You can compare and which is the most toxic, you can pick. Okay. Okay, we will move to the today's lecture. So we will learn today. So Black. we will briefly go through the which, what are the different orthopods of medical importance, which you have to learn. So what are these orthopod bond diseases? So what is the transmission of orthopod diseases? Then we will discuss briefly about anopheles, Culex. In between, you will be viewing the slides through the microscope. And finally, we will discuss some important points about mosquito control measures, which is also a very important question for our theory examination also, right? Okay, we'll go with the orthopods of medical importance. Again, it was broadly classified into three classes, class insecta, arachnida, crustacea. So class insecta, so which uh, the mosquitoes, flies, human lice, fleas, red red bugs, these belong to class insecta. These contain three pairs of legs. This is the characteristic. Then class arach arachnida includes ticks, mites. Crustacea includes cyclops. These are the different orthopods which are of, of medical importance. So what are different orthopod bond diseases? A lot of diseases which are spread through the orthopods. Like mosquito, which can spread malaria, filaria, Japanese encephalitis, viral fevers, a lot of viral fevers, hemorrhagic fever, etc. The house flies, these also act as spreaders of typhoid fever, diarrhea, gastroenteritis, trachoma, etc. A lot of diseases which will spread through the house fly. Then sand fly, which will transmit kalajar, oriental sore, sand fly fever. CC fly, sleeping sickness. These all you might have learned during your microbiology also. This is nothing but just a, a speed revision. So loose, that is typhus, pediculosis, relapsing fever or trench fever. Rat flea will spread bubonic plague, endemic typhus. Black fly, onchocercariasis. Red weed bug, Chagas disease. Hot tick, tick typhus. Then soft tick, Q fever or relapsing fever. Then promiculate mite, scrub typhus or and rickettsial pox. Each mite, which it will transmit scabies disease, cyclops, guinea worm disease, or fish tape worm. Then cockroaches, it will act as transmitting disease for enteric pathogens. So these are the different orthopod bond diseases. We are going only into the brief, only into the brief, just we will go into the importance of our topic mainly. We will discuss a brief. Then transmission of orthopod bond diseases. Again, there may be a three different types of transmission cycles which are involved like direct contact, mechanical transmission or biological transmission. So what is direct contact? So again, it will spread orthopods are directly transferred from man to man through the close contact. For example, a scabies or pediculosis. Then mechanical transmission. So there should be something to transmit between the two hosts. Again, it may be due to transmission of diarrhea, like dysentery, typhoid, food poisoning, trachoma. This might be spread through the house fly. So this is called mechanical transmission. So again, biological transmission. So again, here there is disease agent multiplies or undergoes some developmental change with or without multiplication in the arthropod host. Again, these are of three types in biological. Propagative, cyclopropagative, cyclodevelopmental. So what are these? So again, propagative. So what disease agent will do? It will undergo cycle, no cyclical change, but multiplies its number in the body of the vector. So this is called propagative. This we will see in the plague bacilli in the rat fleas, right? Only number will be multiplying with no cyclical change. What is cyclopropagative? So again, here the disease agent undergoes cyclical change and multiplies in the body of the arthropod. For example, like malarial parasite in the Anopheles mosquito. Coming to cyclodevelopmental. So here the disease agent undergoes cyclical change, but it will not multiply, it will not increase its number in the body of the arthropod. For example, like filarial parasite in Culex mosquito and guniworm embryo in the cyclops. So the different biological transmission in case of arthropods. Okay, we will move into the mosquito. So just go through this video, a small video, just you will be going through different phases of mosquito. So what we, we can do.
This is the deadliest animal in the world. Mosquitoes kill hundreds of thousands of people each year, the most vulnerable people, children, pregnant women. No other bite kills humans or makes more of us sick. So what makes a mosquito's bite so effective? For starters, they're motivated. Only females bite us. We need blood to make eggs. And to pull up water for their babies to hatch in. Even a piece of trash can hold enough. At first glance, it looks simple, this mosquito digging her proboscis into us. But the tools she's using here are sophisticated. First, a protective sheet for traps. If you look at a mosquito's head under a microscope, you can see what that sheet protects. And inside there are six needles. Two of them have tiny teeth. She uses those to saw through the skin. They're so sharp, you can barely feel her pushing. These other two needles hold the tissues apart while she works. And under the skin, you can see her probing, looking for a blood vessel. Receptors on the tip of one of her other needles pick up on chemicals that our blood vessels exude naturally and guide her to it. Then she uses this same needle like a straw. As her gut fills up, she separates water from the blood and squeezes it out. See that drop? That frees up space to stuff herself with more nutritious red blood cells. With another needle, she spits chemicals into us. They get our blood flowing more easily and give us itchy welts afterwards. And sometimes, before she pries herself away, she leaves a parting gift in her saliva. A virus or a parasite that can sicken or kill us. There's nothing in it for her. The viruses and parasites are just hitching a ride. But this is what makes mortal enemies out of us and mosquitoes. They take our blood. Sometimes we take theirs. But often not soon enough. Good, you're still there. These are the larvae of Culex pipiens, aka the common house mosquito here in California. Gross, right? Well, you can avoid them by emptying your rain gutters, pet water dishes too. While you're at it, subscribe. We have so many more science videos coming your way. See you next time. Look, okay, thankful to the Deep Look videos for providing such a beautiful video. So in the video, you might have seen a lot of varieties of mosquitoes. That is our medical importance. And I've seen some stages like larva, pupa, finally adult. So biting habits. So how it will take. So we will discuss the same in brief. Okay. So in the Anopheles, we will start with the Anopheles. Then we will discuss the Quilex mosquito. In the Anopheles, so starting we will see the introduction or general characteristics. So how its body divided into. So what is the life cycle starting with the egg to the adult. Then what are the habits of this mosquito? Then uh, what are the different diseases transmitted? So what are the different control measures? We'll see during the, uh, after completing Quilex, we'll see the control measures and both are combined. Okay, so coming to the introduction, again, these are the four important group of mosquitoes in India, which are related to the disease transmission. These are Anopheles, Quilex, Aedes, and Mansonia, right? So we'll discuss now Anopheles. So again, in India, 45 species of Anopheles mosquitoes have been found, but only a few of them involved as vectors or carriers of malaria. These are Anopheles culipaceus, Anopheles cluviatilis, Anopheles minimus, Anopheles philippinensis, Anopheles tepensi, Anopheles sandiacus, Anopheles leucosferus. So again, depending on the areas of distribution, we can divide these varieties of mosquitoes into regions like where they most commonly found in the foothill. Those are Anopheles fluviatilis, Anopheles minimus. So mosquitoes found in the coastal regions. These are Anopheles sandicus, Anopheles stephansi. 
then who, which found in the plains are anaphylis culipensis anaphylis philippensis these are the very important you should remember right you might be getting a lot of questions during your object to type of examinations like neat so what are the different general characteristics so again the body of mosquito we, we can divide it into head thorax and abdomen this might you might have learned the previous in the biology also head thorax and abdomen so now the coming slides what we are visualizing in this lecture these are viewed through the 20x magnification of microscope again you, when you are arrived to the college again you will be viewing the same the finally the same you will be keeping during your final examination practicals right so we will discuss so what are the different characteristics so coming to the head it is semi globular in outline and bears the following structures like a pair of eyes a proboscis through which the mosquito binds the host so again there are a pair of palpi again they will be present a side of the proboscis then a pair of antenna or feelers again these are bushy in the male and not quite so not so quite bushy in the case of females this is a distinguishing feature you can identify a slide of female or male mosquito right bushy in case of bushy antenna in case of male so these are this is the slide of mosquito mouth parts so okay, again we will be seeing some proboscis head right okay coming to the thorax again there will be pair of wings dorsally three pairs of legs ventrally again the insecta all insecta will be having the three pairs of legs right so again the buzzing noise which the mosquito produce is due to the beating of their wings vigorously and not due to the singing of the mosquito you will be hearing a lot of buzzing noise when the mosquito arrives towards you so it is simply due to the beating of mosquito not due to the singing so this is a slide of mosquito leg and a mosquito wing coming to the abdomen again this is composed of 10 segments the last two of which are modified to form the external genitalia so again we'll go into the life cycle of the mosquito so again you are seeing the adult so again it will hatch eggs on the surface of water then they will form into a next stage that is larvae then they will transfer transform into the comma shaped that is pupa then again pupa evolve into the adult this is the mosquito life cycle so we will see so again coming to the life cycle of egg so what it will be in the anopheles so again it lays eggs on the surface of water again that is in a batch of 100 to 250 at a time so again the anopheles lays her egg singly the eggs are boat shaped and possess lateral floats again under favorable conditions this egg stage of mosquito lasts for about 1 to 2 days so this is a slide of anopheles egg again it will be like a boat shape so coming to the larvae next phase of anopheles again this larvae will be floating horizontally or parallel to the water surface as seen in the picture and there will be no siphon tube at the tip of its abdomen so this is a distinguishing feature with the culex mosquito so anopheles and culex how you will be differentiating the larvae so the larvae of anopheles will be not having siphon tube again when you observe in the water it will float horizontally or parallel to the water again it will have palmate hairs on abdomen segments again this larva stays occupies 5 to 7 days so this is a slide of anopheles larvae again there is no siphon tube so again coming to the next phase that is pupa the pupa is again comma shaped in appearance the pupa represents the resting stage in the life history of mosquito again you can you will be observing siphon tube in the pupa of anopheles right not in the larval stage it is broad and short again it is a differentiating with the uh, culex so culex will be having a long one here it is very short one in the 
pupa of anopheles again this pupal stage will last for one to two days so this is the mosquito pupa mosquito pupa slide which you will be going to see when you are arriving to the coris through the 20x magnification of mosquito of microscope this is a mosquito pupa a small siphon tube will be present okay coming to the adult next phase again the life cycle from egg to adult it will be completed in the 7 to 10 days this is the life cycle right not the life span of mosquito life span is different and life cycle is different life span will be 8 to 34 days life cycle will be the 7 to 10 days the timing from the hatching of egg to the development of adult so again the normally adult mosquito lives for about two weeks in general on an average the males are generally short-lived when compared to females when at rest inclined at an angle to the surface anopheles mosquito again wings are spotted and palpi are long in both the sexes so wings are unspot not spotted in culex this is again differentiating feature then palpi are short in the culex here in the anopheles palpi are long and wings are spotted so this is a slide of mosquito adult so we'll move into the habits of anopheles again males never bite they will depend on the uh, juices of plant juices like flower then the females are hematophagous these require a blood meal once in two to three days for the development of eggs in general mosquitoes bite in the evening or in the early part of the night so anopheles prefer clean water for the breeding places so when compared to cool eggs it will prefer dirty water anopheles will prefer clean water so again the normal lifespan it will be varying from 8 to 34 days again i am repeating lifespan is different and life cycle duration is different so normal lifespan of mosquito will be varying from 8 to 34 days again when compared to the females males as a rule are short-lived so what are the different diseases which can be transmitted through the anopheles mosquitoes so main thing is malaria so again filaria can also be spread through this anopheles mosquito but not and not reported in india so malaria is a common disease which can be transmitted through the anopheles mosquito so again here a pictogram you will be seeing so again a mosquito's father is asking how is your flight first flight today so again it was feeling great you know when your mosquito arrives you will be clapping for the mosquito so this baby mosquito is feeling it was all our humans will be are appreciating it for making the beautiful buzzing noise right okay so we will move into the culex we have finished anopheles we will move into the culex so again we will discuss introduction general characteristics life cycle habits this is transmitted finally we will discuss common control measures for the mosquitoes both anopheles and culex so coming to the introduction so these mosquitoes which belong to genus are the common nuisance mosquitoes right so again important member of this group is culex pathogens that is vector of bancroftian filariasis in india so again general characteristics yeah. it will mosquito body divided into head thorax and abdomen as like the same as anopheles so these are the different culex mouth parts which you will be seeing microscopic slide again proboscis is light bushy when compared to this anopheles okay again we will move to the life cycle again you know egg larva pupa and adult so we will see a small video of this life cycle of culex Mosquitoes go through four stages of development in their lives. They undergo complete metamorphosis. Culex mosquitoes lay their eggs on the surface of fresh water or in areas that will be temporarily wet, like floodplains. The eggs float alone or in groups that look like rafts. Eggs laid during winter can survive to hatch in the spring. 
mosquito eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae live at the surface of the water and breathe through a tube. As the larvae grow, they shed their skin a few times. If mosquito larvae need to hide from predators, they can swim and dive below the water's surface. Mosquito larvae live a few days to a few weeks before they turn into pupae. They stop feeding just before they turn into pupae. The pupae live at the water's surface and breathe through two small tubes. Mosquito pupae do not eat, but they are active. They tumble below the surface of the water when disturbed. They remain in the pupal stage anywhere from one to a few days, depending on the water temperature. While inside the pupa, the larva transforms into an adult. The adult breaks out of the pupal case crawls onto the surface of the water. It rests while its exoskeleton hardens. Later, it crawls to a safe place out of the water and spreads its wings out to dry to prepare for life on land. The mosquito is now a flying land insect. Adult mosquitoes mate to produce eggs for the next generation. Adult female mosquitoes can live for many days to weeks, while adult male mosquitoes usually live just a few days after they mate. Okay, you have watched some beautiful video and we are thankful to them. I like Naj Autobussy for providing this beautiful video. So in the video, you might have seen a siphon tube of larvae, which, which is uh, taking air through the siphon tube. So larvae of Culex. So again, when compared to Anopheles, it is not horizontal or flat. So it is an inclination or angle or even vertical to the surface of water. Again, this is a differentiating feature with the Anopheles mosquito. We will go through the life cycle. So coming to the egg. So this Culex lays or eggs in small clusters of rafts. These eggs are vowel shaped and do not possess lateral floats. So this is the egg of Culex mosquito. This is a slide. So these are a vowel shaped. So coming to the larvae. So larvae are suspended in water with their head downwards. They all possess a siphon tube, what you have watched in the beautiful video. So siphon tube is situated on the eighth abdominal segment with no palmate hairs. So this is Culex larva slide, which is having a siphon tube on the eighth abdominal segment. So coming to the pupa, so here it is siphon tube is long and narrow. So when, when compared to the Anopheles, it is short. So here, Culex pupa siphon tube is long. This is a slide of Culex pupa. So coming to the adult, again when at rest, the body exhibits a hunchback, then wings are unspotted, palpi are short in case of female. Again, different differentiating features with the Anopheles mosquito. So this is a slide of Culex adult.
So coming to the habits of this Culex mosquito, this Culex prefers dirty and polluted water. It breeds profusely in dirty water collections like stagnant drains, cesspools, septic tanks, burrow pits, and different types of collect water collections. Again, this species is highly anthropophilic. That is nothing but it enters the house at dusk and reaches maximum density by the night, midnight. So these are the then the peak biting habiting habit time is about midnight for the Culex mosquito. Then legs, particularly below the knee, are the preferred biting site for this mosquito. Again, during daytime, it may be seen resting indoors on the walls, underneath furniture, inside empty pots, and in dark corners. So again, different disease transmitted through this Culex. So that is Bancroftian filariasis, Japanese encephalitis, West Nile viral anthritis, it may be epidemic or polyarthritis. Again, so not only our classes, again, the mosquitoes will be having a lot of classes for how to bite effectively human for drawing the blood. Again, the teacher is saying, although you have to dig a little deeper with the corpulent humans, their blood has a buttery creaminess that makes it worthwhile. So they will be having a same as classes more training as like reverse. So again, finally, we go into the mosquito control measures, which is very important for our examination part. And whenever we keep a slide during the examination, again, we will ask, identify the slide and its medical importance or its control measures. So again, you want to identify the larvae, pupae or adult. Accordingly, you have to write the control measures, right? So we will see. So again, not only single method is effective for control of mosquitoes, experts has recommended integrated approach. This is nothing but it uh, which avoids excessive use of any one methods like insecticides or any other, but tries to combine one or more methods with a view to obtain maximum results with minimum inputs. And it also prevents the environmental pollution with toxic chemicals and development of resistance to the insecticides. So follow the integrated approach, mixed methods. So what are the different control measures? So you might have learned by this time, like anti-larval measures, anti-adult measures, or protection against the mosquito bites. So what are the different anti-larval measures you want to you want to do on these mosquitoes? Can anyone uh, name some of the anti-larval measures? Biological methods. Yes, good, very good. Chemical methods. Yes, excellent. Again, there are a variety a lot of methods. We'll go quickly. Then uh, anti rival methods includes environmental control, chemical control, biological control. So out of all this, environmental control is the best approach to the control of arthropods in general when compared to the other chemical or biological. So best approach is the environmental control for the control of arthropods. Second main important point in environmental control is source reduction. The most important step is reducing the number of mosquitoes in to the eliminate their breeding places. Again, through it may be done through the minor engineering methods like filling or leveling the dry and dryness or bleeding places or water management like intermittent irrigation you can do. Then rendering the water not suitable for mosquito like changing its salinity and again, for the Culex mosquitoes, we should abolish the domestic and pre-domestic source of breeding sites, like cesspools or open ditches. And again, there should be adequate collection or removal and disposal of sea waste or waste water. Again, you are seeing the dirty water collection through in which Culex mosquito will be breeding. So again, for controlling anopheles, you have to look for abolishing appropriate engineering measures like filling the drains and removing the drains, right? So coming to chemical control, so again, you are seeing these three fancy larvicides. So these are controlling larva. So mineral oils, Paris green on synthetic insecticides. So first we will discuss about mineral oils. So these are nothing but widely used oils include like diesel oil, fuel oil, kerosene or special oils, which include like mosquito larvicidal oil also will be using. So this is the oldest method. They will disperse the oil on the surface of water, right? So again, this oil kills larvae and pupa within a short time after application. So again, how much amount is needed? 40 to 90 liters per hectare. Once a week, we will apply, right? 
Why once I make the life cycle life span life cycle is about seven seven days. So again we can kill the we disturb the cycle of this mosquito. So what these are events will be the unfit for drinking. It will kill the fish which are living in the water. So we'll go into the Paris green. So again it is a green crystalline powder which is insoluble in water. Then it is a stomach poison and it should be ingested by the larva to be effective. So again it will kill mainly the Anopheles larva because it is insoluble. It will be on the surface of water. So flat on the surface of water is Anopheles larva when compared to the Culex. So again these are surface feeders most effective on the Anopheles larva. So it is also effective on the Culex with the different formulations but more effective on the Anopheles larva. So again you will be applying 2% dust. Then amount you will be applying 1 kg of Paris green per hectare of water. Then in doses applied Paris green does not harm fish or man or domestic animals. This is advantage over the previous one. Again a good sample of Paris green must contain 50% arsenious oxide. Coming to the synthetic insect sites. These are organophosphorus compounds. These are the most effective life sites which includes pentayon, chlorpyrifos, abate. So again abate at a concentration of 1 ppm has been found very effective larvicide and also a least toxic. So again, why only organophosphorus? Why not organochlorine? So organochlorine compounds like DDT or HCH, these are not recommended for larvicide operation. Why? There is a long residual effect, water contamination will be there and there will be a very big problem that is developing resistance in the vector mosquitoes. So we are avoiding organochlorine compounds as synthetic insecticides. We are using organophosphorus compounds. So what is biological control then? Next one, after chemical. So here we are using small fish which are eat on mosquito larvae. These are Gambusa aphanes or other fish like Labister reticulatus or we also called Barbados millions. So these fish can be used in burrow pits, sewage oxidation ponds, ornamental ponds, cisterns and farm ponds. This you have to remember. Very important. Gambusa, Ephenis, Labister, Reticulatus. So we move to anti-adult measures. How we can kill the adult mosquitoes with the help of residual sprays, space sprays, genetic control. So coming to residual sprays, adult mosquitoes are most commonly controlled by spraying houses with residual insecticides. It can be indoor mainly. So again, what is the drug? What is the insecticide of choice here? DDT. Again, we will giving one to two grams of pure DDT per square meters. So again, we should apply one to three times a year to walls and other surfaces where mosquitoes rest. So these are the different residual sprays. Then there is a DDT resistance. We should go for Linden, Marathon or OMS 33, right? And this is a very big problem. The resistance to the insecticides. Coming to space sprays, these are nothing but these formulations will be sprayed into atmosphere in the form of mist or fog as seen in the picture. The common spray sprays are pyrethrum or residual insecticides. So coming to pyrethrum extract, this is extracted from a flower, what you are saying pyrethrum. Again it is an active is pyrethrin, it is a narrow poison, the amount required is some O's per 1000 cubic feet. Again, the doors and windows are kept closed for half an hour after giving this pyrethrum extract spray. Coming to residual insecticides, these are extensively used, which are malathion or penithrothion. So, what is the method used for this ULV, that is ultra low volume spray, spray spraying method? Again, there are some limitations like reduction in the number of mosquitoes is temporary and reinfection occur within a short while. So, coming to genetic control, last one. So again, their use is still in the research process, research phase. Again, the methods which we can involve in the genetic control like sterile male techniques, cytoplasmic incompatibility, chromosomal translocations, sex distortion, and the final one is gene replacement. And there are a lot of advantages for the previous one, like chemical or other one, biological, because it is very cheaper and potentially more efficient and it will be not subject to the vector resistance as seen in the other insecticides. Again, protection against mosquito bites, mainly the adults. Adult bites, how you can prevent? Mosquito net, screening or repellent. Again, mosquito net, it, they will offer protection during sleep. They are generally white in color because to identify the mosquito. 
then best pattern is the rectangular net you might be seeing oval or circular best recommended is rectangular type pattern then net hole dimension recommended is 0.045 inch it is a standard and number of holes per square inch is 150 coming to screening again the screening made of copper or bronze installed in the buildings what we will be seeing in our houses or buildings again aperture will be 16 meshes will be present per square inch again its advantage is very much it gives very fruitful results but only disadvantage is it is expensive but it will give very excellent results coming to repellents the outstanding all purpose repellent is deet that is diethyl toluamide so it is active against the culex pathogens for 18 to 20 hours again there are other repellents like indolone dimethyl phthalate dimethyl carbate ethyl hexanidol again we should be applying on the skin and there will be short duration of protection from the mosquito bites again there are different toxic labels of pesticide in india what you are seeing these are given by the insecticide rules 1971 through the insecticide act of 1968 again you are seeing uh, red one is having a poison symbol danger symbol also because it is a highly toxic that is extremely toxic or hazardous for example like zinc phosphide so yellow is highly toxic that is example is endosulfan blue moderately toxic malathion green is slightly toxic so mosquito repellents this come into this category of green label again you are seeing a mosquito bar uh, which you are seeing a lot of bags o a b a b so again according a little research so who are having o group were more attracting the mosquitoes they are more prone to get the bite of mosquitoes right o group followed by the a group so again we will skip this bottle experiment this is nothing but when you see so here you seeing a small bottle when you drop some eggs of mosquito so what will happen this is simple what you have seen in the previous slides egg will develop slowly into the next phase larvae then next phase into the pupae then finally into the adult so after you it's a closed bottle so finally at the end of the video you will be seeing the mosquitoes flying in the closed bottle this is a bottle experiment okay so we will skip and we will move into the next one so we'll move into the post test you might have learned something in this lecture we'll go with the post test you can unmute yourself and you can answer the question so first question mosquitoes that breed in dirty water collection are culex 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 mosquito yes so correct answer is culex so you are seeing the anopheles that is they will prefer fresh water fresh water dirty water yes very good second question the anopheles species most commonly found in coastal regions is defensive philippine excellent excellent response that is b that is anopheles defensive any other you know in coastal region other than defensive sunday yes. sunday guys simple sunday sunday cus is the another one which will found in the coastal region okay what is the normal life span of mosquito 8 to 34 days excellent great response that is 8 to 34 days so again this is life span of mosquito not life cycle so fourth one mosquitoes whose larvae lay horizontal on the water and thus rest parallel to the surface of water anopheles mosquitoes anopheles excellent response that is anopheles mosquito you will be seeing already you have seen a picture also okay anopheles is the correct answer best approach to the control of arthropods is environmental control it's very good so that is environmental com control when compared to the other mechanism right sixth one all the following measures are anti larval measures except pyrethrum pyrethrum as yes, very good that is pyrethrum right pyrethrum you have seen then different irrigation paris green gambusa these will depend on the larvae 
anti-lateral measures, right? Pyrethrum is the correct answer. Mustard net hole diameter is zero point zero four seven five inch. Excellent. That is correct answer is B. What you have said that is zero point zero four seven five inch. So Paris green is used to eliminate which larva? Anopheles. Yes, you know. A, uh, excellent. Very good. That is anopheles because it is a surface feeder, and Paris green is insoluble in water. Compared to Culex, anopheles is the correct answer. So identify this slide. Culex pupa. Again, it is a comma, not a straight, as you observed in the slide. This is a slight comma, and you are seeing a brief siphon tube, big one. That is correct answer is Culex Culex pupa. pupa. Very good. That is D. So most other other preferred color coding is red. Red color. Yes, it is showing in the red color. A A is the correct answer for this question. And the last question is today is celebrated as International Day of International Algebra Day. Day. Space, World Algebra Day, Doctor Sir's birthday, Day, and all of the above. So don't be confused. CSR is myself. Again, you will be uh, most visiting that is Internet Day of Peace today celebrated, and World Alzheimer's Day also September twenty first, and my birthday also twenty first. So this is a just coincidence, right? Happy birthday, sir! Happy birthday, sir! Happy birthday, sir! Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, thank you all, thank you so much. Happy birthday, sir. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you.